Okay, this is cool dude Clem here with a little bit of sad news about the amplifier adventure. I am going to continue on with this project, but I might not be using this circuit after all. You may remember this. This is the thing I've been working on for some time now. The amplifier made with completely discrete components. You can see I've added a heat sink, although it really isn't worth it because this thing is supposed to give out about 10 watts per channel, but I can't even get anything more than about 1 watt out of it. Turn the volume up and it just distorts. And Dr. Cassette has suggested that maybe it's the driver transistors, and I think I agree with him on this. Because I've used BC557s and 558s, which don't really have much gain. That's these four transistors along here. Not the big ones, these little ones that are next to them. So I might do some experimenting with that circuit. See if I can get some more volume out of it using different transistors. First I thought maybe it was the power supply because it wasn't giving out much current at all. So I built this much more powerful power supply. You can just see it in a sort of a prototype form here. Now this gives out about 19 volts, about over 2 amps. More than enough power th for the thing, but still, even on that power supply, still distorts. So, in the meantime, I'm going to resort to using a chip amplifier, and that's what I've got here. So, here is the chip-based amplifier, half-built. I've only built one channel, but I'm going to build put another chip on there for stereo. If we zoom in, by which I simply mean move the camera closer, you can see... I've used an LM383 chip. Nice thing about these chip amplifiers is they're quite easy to do. As you can see, don't require much external components. But the most important thing about this is that they work, as long as you wire them up correctly. In fact, these particular chips are quite picky about the components you use, but as long as you got that right, no problem. Crazy thing is, when I first got this, um, when I first tested this circuit, I tested it with no speaker connected and Nothing connected to the input, just to make sure everything was okay. I knew it was going to take some voltage readings and things like that. And stupidly enough, I connected the speaker output to the power supply's ground. And of course, when I turned it on, I was wondering why I was getting a huge amperage going through the meter. It's like one and a half over one and a half amps. So I corrected that little problem, and surprisingly, the chip survived. It still works. But of course. Even though I corrected that problem, next time I powered it on, it was still being a power-hungry swine. It was still taking up over one and a half amps. So something was oscillating somewhere, which was what, what was making it do that. So what I did was put this capacitor here to filter the power supply. Even though there's this one, this big-ass 2200 microfarad capacitor here, already filtering the power supply, I had to add this little tiny one and that seemed to do the trick. It seems to work absolutely fine now. If you're wondering what this circuit is, that's a power supply out of a tape deck that sadly died. That circuit board was just absolutely cracked and unrepairable. But anyway, I'm going to turn this on and show you it working. So, let's test what I've got so far. Now, I'll turn the meter on. There we go. And power up the power supply. There we go. The chip is taking about 51 milliamps at the moment, which is quite normal. It's what I'd expect from a chip like this, when it's just doing nothing. Now, I'm going to play a tape. It's um, sort of old-school house and techno and stuff like that, but from a time when that stuff was actually good, just to show you how well it works. too much of that because don't know if it's copyrighted especially if don't know if it's copyrighted under WMG and you know I don't want the video to get muted or otherwise I'll just be talking here and talking here and talking here and you won't hear a word I'm saying because they're so stupid like that because you use the tiny little bit of their music and you and you talk they cut that out as well so stupid no they couldn't just mute that tiny little bit of the video that's got the music on and oh no they have to mute the entire thing I should really shut up because stupid 
person I'm seeing is sleeping in the other room, which is really annoying. I don't know why he can't sleep in his own place. And for God's sake, this is not... this is our house, not a bed and bloody breakfast. But anyway, uh, I'm going to start work on adding the other chip so, for stereo. So, see you later. Well, here it is, built, tested, and not working. Yep, there's definitely a gremlin in the works somewhere. Anyway, as you can see, I've added the second chip and the necessary circuitry to make it work. Now, for some reason, as soon as you put an audio signal into it, the current it draws suddenly skyrockets, and I've no idea why. As you can see, it's drawing a similar amount of current to, as the other one was. You can see 62 milliamps, no, no big deal, but as soon as I start the tape playing, just skyrockets. So I better just disconnect that before it blows up. I did have the volume turned down as well, so, you know, whatever. So, there's definitely a gremlin in the work somewhere there. I've got to figure out why that's doing that. Expand my brain, learning juice. Okay, well I've been through the entire circuit and I think I might have found the problem. I don't think there's a very good connection here. Normally where there's a good connection you'll hear the meter beep. Don't know if you can hear that. But this connection here... As you can hear, it's not a very steady beep, or as you probably couldn't hear. So, I'm going to go over this with my soldering iron, and see if I can make that any better, because that bad connection is right where the snubbing capacitor is, so it's, I think the chip is oscillating at a really high frequency, and that's why it's pulling so much current. So, I'm just going to redo this connection, and see if that fixes the problem, and if it doesn't, I'll try replacing that capacitor, and if that doesn't help, I shall have to kill myself. Okay. Okay, I have the offending circuit powered up, and already I can see a difference. It's now pulling 60 milliamps, whereas previously it was pulling 62, so obviously something has happened. Now, play the tape and see what it does. Still doing it. So, either this little capacitor here is not making a very good connection, which I'm going to replace. If that doesn't fix anything, it must be a faulty chip, because everything else on the circuit is exactly the same as how it is on this circuit. And first of all, a little teeny experiment to test if it really is that capacitor that is not connecting. I've added another capacitor here between the speaker and the ground. So, if it is an oscillation issue, if the chip is oscillating, this little capacitor should do the job of what this capacitor does. And we'll see what we get. Okay, I'll start the tape playing. Oh, look. I think that's the problem. Oh, if you're wondering about the music, there you go. Can you see that? It says Moonlight Fiesta. No idea who made it, but I thought it would do as a good thing to test it with. That just shows my sort of range when it comes to music. So, there we go. That's obviously what the problem is. So now I've just got to put this little guy in there, and it should all be done. I've replaced that capacitor, as you can now see. And guess what? Still hogging all the power from the power supply when it was shagga dagger wagga dagger waggering. I didn't know how to put that last bit into words, so I just said it in my own language. Yeah. I make up my own words. Digga digga digga's another one. Though I haven't said that in any of my videos. But anyway, moving on. 
I decided just to take out that resistor after all and try that and still taken up a whole lot of power when the audio signal was applied and it's not the audio signal or the loudness itself because when I stopped the tape playing so there's no signal going into it it's still taking a whole boatload of amps well just over an amp so I added this capacitor between the speaker and the ground still doing the same thing but finally after adding another capacitor has finally stopped it doing this weird thing that it's doing with the whenever it gets an audio signal it just starts taking up a whole load of power so yeah 62 milliamps being consumed when I play the tape play it reasonably loud There you can see it seems to be working properly. Okay, um, seems like we have another sick patient now. My Denon DRM600 cassette deck seems to have gone ill now. Absolutely no right hand channel sound. If you play it, you can see both the level meters are moving, but for some reason there's absolutely no right hand sound coming out of it. Not sure what's going on there. On the lighter side of things, I have built a working chip amplifier now. The thing is, this side seems to work pretty much perfectly, but this side has a little bit of a problem. As you can see, I've put this circuit back the way it was, because that really was what worked best. So, both these circuits are exactly the same again, but I found the only way to stop this side from taking an excessively large amount of power to put this extra capacitor here between the speaker out and the ground for some reason this one here no matter how it's connected up even if the resistor is there or not there it just seems to go crazy but this capacitor this extra capacitor seems to do the trick and um, well that's how I'm going to use it strange they're both exactly the same circuit one works perfectly and the other one needs a little bit of help but anyway that's all done now and in case you're wondering about the drink, it was only iron brew. So anyway, I'll see you next time. And until next time, goodbye.